Uh, we're continuing how, how to correctly uh, practice and keep the commitments of highest yoga tantra uh -huh. like that. Okay. <laughs> Overview and detailed as okay. much as you want, <laughs> of course. <laughs> this, it's been very helpful. <laughs> Uh, since we are discussing on Buddha Dharma, therefore we must adjust our motivation uh, at the best, at least to have a motivation of a Buddha Chitta mm. or altruistic mind. So adjusting a motivation is always important, it's essential. And the Dhamma practice that what we do, depending on motivation, it impacts the profundity of our practice. Mm -hmm. So if one's uh, motivation for doing practice just to confine within the interests of this life, then it's very uh, the limited uh, uh, motivation, and uh, I cannot I, I, I cannot say that there's no benefit at all. But however, according to the uh, Buddhist text, so that this practice cannot be qualified as a, a dhamma dhamma practice. Mm. So in order to qualify one's practice as a genuine Adama practice, the minimum requirement for adjusting motivation is to uh for the next life mm. onwards. And <laughs> So the uh, so according to the um, adjust uh, adjusting our motivation to a dhamma practice cross corresponding to the three uh practitioners uh so for that. For example, the the small scope small scope of practitioners, usually how they adjust their motivation uh, for the practice is by uh, by thinking that in order to achieve a higher migration, better life in the next life, uh, so I'm going to do this and that kind of practice. So in other words, the practitioners. The whole motivation for doing is confined within the interest of immediate next life to have a better life 
right? So this is what we call a small scopes of practitioners. And usually like a for, uh, as a Dhamma practice, uh, practitioners um, must have this uh, really uh, strong sense of dissatisfaction or, or retiring from the sufferings of this life. And because of sufferings of this life, one should be get inspired or one should just uh, put a track into the Dhamma practice. That's usually what it's uh, prefer. However, like if if a person who doesn't face uh, a lot of problem, how to say, it? in other words, a person who doesn't encounter too many uh, sufferings in this life, then such person might not have a very a strong uh, sense of like a uh, just uh, dissatisfaction, uh, uh, how to say it? dis, not dissatisfied, right? Dissatisfaction for this interest of this life because person feels this is a good life. Then, if a person feels that this is a good life, then that person it's uh well that person might not have uh uh, mm, uh might not have a strong uh how to say it like uh seeing um, downside of a samsara for the next life ta ko le di khasa a jaga na jila so be dum me ta ani cho me ta bala so be de ge samlo ma dang ba je ji dang ge ma zu ta ya zam bli de nang ge ji na ta au su a de ge san le ga na ya ta ji yu cha jin de wo ga ya ta ji yu de de san de na de ni dum me so in other words, like if a person feels that I have a good job and just uh, it's everything looks good to me and so far I'm very lucky I have everything. I have a good good work, good family, everything's good. If a person thinks in this direction, then it hinders to develop a genuine sense of renunciation, seeing the suffering nature of samsara. Mm-hmm. Right? Taku said the Nangi, any Jagana Jilas of the Dunga Tang, Chawamita was over the Sando Tangne, any never June, any da coin Karsukurta, Yamlin Chedo, Yingdu, whichever, and the co Jamdula Sopa. Then the Yamlin Chiku, Jamdula Jasuatang, any Jamdu Chetang, or the Yamlin de Chiku Viris. So, like it's just um, for, for the uh, the practice concerning for the small small scope practitioner, usually like it's just it's important to at least to cultivating the nature of the cycle existence by at least uh, by uh, reflecting on the sufferings of a birth, suffering of a aging, suffering of the death. So all those are natural process and and by reflecting on those uh, sufferings, then generating a genuine sense of taking refuge to the three jewels in order to be protected from those sufferings. So those are the uh, general modules for a practice uh, for the small scopes of practitioners, mm-hmm. the generating renunciation and taking practice. Mm-hmm. Nanjumabu uh, so generally speaking like uh, sometimes uh, our practitioners how to say they uh, like a uh, they, they become a little bit of immune to uh, dhamma practice uh, for example uh, also thinking that oh i heard that and been to this teaching and so on and so forth and by thinking that small scopes of pra- the practice concerning small scopes of practitioner, 
it is possible that person might feel that this, those are the foundation practices uh, I need, I should aim for higher teachings, right? Uh, so in this manner, they like uh, undermine the importance of the very important practice. Uh, so we should try to avoid such a circumstances because to become a true practitioner, a genuine practitioner must construct on a healthy and stable uh, practice. By first step is uh, generating a genuine sense of renounce, uh, renunciations. How one can develop a genuine sense of renunciation is truly understanding and feeling the sufferings of this life, sacred existence. That's the first step. And by experience the sufferings of this life, then that leads to the taking a genuine sense of refuge to the three jewels. So in order to take the refuge to the three jewels, one must fulfill the two causes for taking refuge. And those two causes are, first one is, uh, uh, first one is a faith. Uh, Fear. 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 So first one is the fear, fear to the sufferings, sufferings of birth, death, age, and so forth, right? Then developing a second uh, cause is to faith, faith to the three jewel that they will protect me faith or confidence towards the uh, three jewels. So those two, one must have those two conditions to develop a genuine sense of refuge to the three jewels. So first, like when, when we say take refuge, they must have, one must have a reason why we are taking refuge. Refuge from what? Sufferings. There's a fear that our the healthy fear the fear to the sufferings of this life, then generating a great confidence or faith to the three jewels that they have a power to emancipate from those sufferings. So to have all those, so all those are lay out the practice for the small scopes of practitioner. Therefore, one must not like undermine or just overlook at those practices. Mm -hmm. So any Buddhist practice that we under we undertake, first step is taking refuge. Either it could be uh, any prospect, uh, any tradition, so either it's a uh, Dharavada uh, Mahayana or the Tantrayana, in any uh, in any of those practices. As long as it's a Buddhist practice, first and the most important step is taking refuge. Therefore, one must have a firm and healthy foundations. Mm -hmm. ตัดจับจดดานดิตังเงี้ยชิบะชุมโมกะจะทะริงตะคังเกฮากูริจัมตุจดดานดิอันนี้เอ่อขาลสุกุรตะจุลุชันดานะชิมะหิมบะเจจ
tini rang ju le jebe go ne rang ni ni a to che ku yo re jab jab kar to ta jab to tu ngoma de 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 mata kan ga ko ni yo re so how to take refuge i'm not going to go i'm not i'm not going to go detail because i i'm sure you all know this but the essence here or what we have to know here taking refuge how to take refuge it's not like a, uh it's not like a, you we should not we should we must dispel the very notion of a savior someone exists outside of you and the one who takes a shelter taking refuge as a different entity and then the problem that i have my savior who's outside of the me will protect me uh, one should not think this way or like it's just or if someone is a uh, very hungry and begging for food then a, a person have all those uh, a very resourceful person have lots of food and feeding the the hung, uh, hungry person it's not like a two different thing we should not think rather taking refuge a genuine sense of taking refuge has to spring from within and when we say taking refuge so now uh, if we look back three jewels right dharma jewel is the true refuge right dharma jewel is a true refuge so speaking of dharma jewels is the uh, cessation and the path are the true refuge so in other words the true protector it's within ourselves in other words the problem that we are facing we encounter those problem by eliminating its causes and conditions leading on the path to eliminate and through the elimination through the practice within ourselves we achieve the cessations so it means protector to refuge is within ourselves so I'm not, not, not good I'm not good detail on this I'm sure you you know this mm-hmm. So again, here adjusting motivation corresponding to the other uh, the practice. For example, if someone truly feels and knows that as long as as long as I'm under the influence of uh, karma and delusions, it doesn't matter where I take the rebirth, I, I am like a default nature face the sufferings. It's a default nature to experience the sufferings. As long as I'm under the influence of delusion and the karma, Therefore, in order to truly free from a suffering, I must liberate myself to cut the cause of de- defilement and the karma. Therefore, uh, generating a genuine sense of liberation. For this reason, I'm going to take refuge to the three jewels to protect me. And right, so then this this kind of practice and the motivation becomes the Middoscopes or practitioners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dong 
Any Tarbe Kongotovachet, the Kogi Karsota, Langjado, Tapanjado, the Dindis. So usually for the uh, practitioner or middle scopes of the practice, usually they, they just can find the practice on the uh, respecting on the law of karma, understanding the 12 links of depend, depending origination, because they have a firm understanding on the uh, Four Noble Truth in terms of the truth of sufferings, how our life basically entails the suffering in natures, right? And then those sufferings are basically a cause, the truth of the origin. And the origin truth of the origin, it entails more detail on the mechanism of the karma uh, and the defilements, ramification of the defilements. And then understanding of those two characteristics, one truly goes deep and respecting to the law of karma, understanding the 12 links of depending, depending origination and so forth, and, and ultimately leads to the liberations. And those practices are the middle scopes, of those modules is for design for middle scopes of practitioners. Mm. Any the <laughs> So the middle scopes of practitioner is extremely important and it's critical. Basically, it lays the foundation for the great scopes of practitioners. In great, great scopes of practitioner, it really emphasizes on the importance of uh, uh, cultivating uh, great compassion for others, the bodhicitta, and so forth. So it really drives whole our practice, uh, uh, practice to to elevate the sufferings of others. How I can truly be in service for the uh, mother sentient beings and uh, generating a genuine sense of a sentiment where one truly wants to abide the mother sentient being in the state of happiness and truly wants to remove their sufferings. Mother sentient beings are sufferings. So in order to truly feel like a uh, liberating the sufferings of others, first and foremost, one must understand the suffering of one's own before one can truly uh, before one can truly feel it and to remove the sufferings of others. So therefore, middle scopes of practitioner is important because in the middle scopes, understand, understanding the suffering of one's own. The more the practitioner truly understands the suffering of one's own in its fullest form, then that person can easily relate towards the other's suffering and 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 more able to be help for the other sentient beings. So, so for this reason, uh, middle scopes of practitioner become so important. Mm. Tang and you send the Suzu Tingley, any coe, donate, 
so here, like I just uh, mentioned earlier, so uh, uh, without a genuine sense of renunciations, uh, then the person, like a four hundred percent sure, the person cannot have a, 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 a altruistic mind, bodhicitta. So to develop a genuine sense of bodhicitta, which is the primary focus on the great scopes of practitioners, to cultivate a bodhicitta. So in order to cultivate a genuine sense of bodhicitta, one must have a, a firm and a stable understanding on the uh, renunciations. So therefore, uh, uh, so the, uh, the practice relating to the uh, refuge, uh, when the great scopes of practitioner develops uh, altruistic motivation by thinking that in order to in order to uh, uh, abide the old dear ascension being in the state of happiness and remove the sufferings of day suffering, may I achieve the supreme state of Buddhahood in order to benefit all dear mother ascension being. For this reason, I'm going to take the refuge i'm going to take refuge to the three jewels mm. so this is this kind is the refuge to, the way great practitioner takes refuge to the three jewels mm. 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 ตื่นบุจิเลยเจลมาตัวอันสันเจคอมบัตโตเตอร์ดิเชกิยอมารวะงาเชงตาตาเตเดมายิมบะเจตื่นตื่นตื่นตื่นตื่นตื่นตื่
उन्हें दे चंदे राम मेंबर दास ताकान सा गैर लक्ष्य सुसु सुसु रो जरूर ना सुसु के लो दे या कंबे ताने कंबे ताने चिपु चुंगु के तंबू के चिपु चुंगु के लो पे ना से दिनांक सुना रो दिन ची एम एम बची तागास नामिंग चंदे दे दे यूंगे दे ऐने लो ले चुचु तांचे कंबे सामलो ताने से दिनांक जो आगे नाचे लो सब सिंगी थाम जाता मारे थे खाने से दिनाल लसुना चेवे लो जिच्चे भी चेन चेने ऐने संबंधी किबु चिम चुंगु के संबंध चिं ऐ न्यामले चेह दे चम डोला सोगल न्यामले चेह दे चेने सुसु बुलो दे दे जेल लो दे थेले जांग जाचेर ताने ऐन चिर खोआ खाने चले चेना यंग कम्सों डोर रिटू खाने चले चेना यंग सुसुग सेम दे खर संबंध तेरे जैसे थम ले आले होंडे तो नहीं सुसु खां खां सा दिए लो दांत संबंध तक तक जो बुद्धि के संबंधी हाँ ते ते ले जाऊँ लो ते ले जाऊँ जाचे रे ताने तां रानी जो बुद्धि तुम्हें दे ते तम जी कैसे बुरे में दो आधा आधा डाउन एस मास सेम जे थम जे जाऊँ संबंधी सुसु के संबंधी जाचे रे चीने शेन सेम जे थाने रंग दुंगे दे शेन सेम जे लखा पे ने ऐने निंजे जे दुंगे दे तो नन्हे देवे वाले ला निंजे थाका लोग रहता शुक्चम बुच्चे ने ऐने संबंधी तेरे जे थम ले वों दे तेरे यहाँ जे बिचिंबी के संबंध तेरे ता तुझे तंगे शुए के के बसों � आलम चीज़ 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 देखा ना आलम से नहीं पागे को लम चप्पू जी पाजो चला ये वाची सुसु दिल पाए एंड डू यू तेरे जी मेंबर था पागा ना सुसु के संबंधी जा चेरे 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 तंग ने यार डोंडे तेरे एंड चावी सरेस सो लाइक आ सो इवन दो दिस ना ना आ इन टर्म्स ऑफ़ द प्रेजेंटेशंस दैट्स uh uh however uh uh one cannot just like misunderstood Listen. so like uh, one cannot misunderstood that this uh it's not like a hierarchy or the graded just as a grade b grade it's not but rather it's a presented primarily due to the disposition of the practitioner and the inclinations of the practitioner that's the one reason so another reason is as the practitioner, it's it's really like it's inside within us. Uh, it's it follows according to the increasing of capacity of practitioner once within. For example, uh, as a practitioner, uh, uh, I mean, just uh, like a uh, nothing to wrong to think about one's own interests uh, at the right. Just like a and uh, I do not want a suffering. Uh, therefore, uh, just I want to have a better life in the future life. Then, then person can pursue in that goal. Then there's this also when then this this kind of thing like uh, okay as long as as long as uh, uh, since a samsara is suffering in nature as long as wherever I take a birth. Uh, I'm I'm bound to experience a suffering because of karma and delusion. Therefore, wanting to liberate, uh, then one f- takes a refuge, right? Then, like, uh, not just me who are who are uh, experiencing a suffering, so too other sentient beings. Moreover, other sentient beings are too kind to me, and therefore, uh uh therefore i must work for the well-being of other sentient beings in order to liberate their sufferings then that leads to the advanced practitioners and furthermore for the uh, tantra practitioners like uh, so i cannot wait because uh, for the like a uh, professional vehicle it takes so long time to achieve enlightenment so therefore i cannot wait that long and in order to swiftly like I just fast track on on my spiritual practice to achieve a buddhahood so now here important thing here is like one cannot see uh, like it's 
tantric practice, fast track is outside of you or something or the practice that it should be really cultivated within ourselves to really like uh, uh, to to find that fast track within ourselves uh, through intensifying our compassion for other sentient beings. And through then, uh, it that leads to that uh, tantric path to enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, Rinpoche here says it's uh, Rinpoche's point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking that, yeah, you know, in general, right? In general, when we didn't pay attention, to, we feel like, uh, okay, there are the small scope path. Uh, here's the middle, here's the uh, uh, great scope, and here's the tantric. I should choose the tantric. It's because it's the most effective and how to say, uh, the uh, no need to, how to say, no need to, so the Tantra practice doesn't require a lot of like a prerequisite teachings. It's just one straight path and that leads to enlightenment very fast. Mm -hmm. So however, whatever we think that, whatever <laughs> we think that way, right? Okay, Tantra is very great teachings, very great uh, path that we should choose or something. It doesn't matter. I, I, my, my opinion, whether you choose Tantra or not, if your your inner how to say your inner practice or your mind is not not uh, improved as the that level, it's not gonna suit. If you are, your mind is not ready for the death path, it that effect is not not that uh, how to say that not not that much effective. somebody so, so here, Rumish is trying to say here is like a okay, if a thunder practice, this thunder practice, if the thunder practice doesn't com uh, compatible with your mental state, here refers to your mental state stuck, your mental state is in the small scopes of practice, and you want to practice the uh, tantra teachings. Then it uh, it uh, it's not much beneficials, not much beneficials. That in the in the time and the and the few day the kanga thangi thanga the topping one the nga korwa. That is the deva yores. That you nga nyamlin di chevgi na. That you nga nyamlin di chevgi na. That thangi ngi few day the the chapa the thangbo tata gugi yores. The bu chungu the samba the samlo tangdan di che. The bu ding the samlo tangdan di che. Any the chidang the theba chimbu the samlo tangdan di che. So, 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 so far, what I'm uh, trying to hear across the point here up to now, what I'm speaking is uh, it should be related with the Tantra because the whole session, afternoon sessions on the Tantra. So I'm to relating to the Tantra teaching because to have the tan Tantric, to have a healthy and productive Tantric uh, practice, one must have a healthy and firm, stable, the foundations. Because Tantric, one can, one can only construct the Tantra practice based on the progressive steps. Tantric practice cannot just build out of out of in the blue sky. Rather, it must be grounded on the small scopes of practice, well small scopes of practice. On top of the well small scopes practice is the build the middle scopes. On top of middle scope, builds the great pra practitioners to practice. On top of that, Tantra. So Tantra practice can be only hold with those foundations. 
Otherwise, it's not compatible. So now, in other, uh, sometimes like a preaching is presented in different uh, format. For example, we say uh, three principal aspects of the path is the foundations. So when we say three principal aspects of the path, here referring to the renunciation, bodhicitta, and the correct view are the, uh, uh, the principal aspects. So therefore, one must build the firm foundation of th three principal aspects of the path. Mm -hmm. So, in the when we speaking of the three principal aspects of the path, the first one is a renunciation, and that renunciation actually it corresponds to the practice of the small scope and the middle scopes of the practitioners. That's it. So the like uh, just uh, cultivating uh, uh, for the better life, for the uh, cultivating the practice and for to have a better rebirth in the next image in the life, and uh, 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 like uh, liberation from the cycle of existence, renouncing oneself. So all those are confined within the practice of the renunciations. Mm. ตั้งแม่นะตั้งงางานเนี่ยมันตั้งเทวจังยังไงเอามาดิฉันจูเซมตั้งอาจุนนำจีจีตั้งงางานเราดูมังบูจิตั้งอาจุนเอ็นดี
So then the third principle says third principle aspects of the path is right view or correct view. So here correct view correct view or right view refers to the emptiness, uh concept of emptiness. Now this is again so very important. So an another indispensable uh so I actually told three principles, access of path, the indispensable practice for a tantric practitioners. Okay. Now, for a tantra, right? So any tan tantra practice that we see or that we uh, th that we do, it just begins with the out of emptiness, one generous into the deity, and so on and so forth. Uh, so for this, like even when I was a child, he refers to Rinpoche was a child, just I also had this like a misunderstanding that like, a, so as a child, when I uh, when I do those uh, practice, it becomes like a, out of emptiness means I just disappear out of pain and then generous uh, becomes a deity. And so I used to think in this when I was a child, but later realized that that was a wrong way to thinking out of emptiness. So, and out of emptiness, even the line says the out of emptiness, right? So it's not like a just house, just like a house is empty and all of a sudden just stops fills the house, not like that. Rather, one aspect of your mind which realized that nature, how everything that exists towards devoid of intrinsic existence and out of that devoidness understanding then generates uh, the deities so therefore this is really directly relates to the essence on the teaching of emptiness when we say empty it's not like a, a nothingness rather empty of here not, here empty refers to the uh it's a negation, right? It's a negate something. When we say empty, here refers to the it negates something. Negate of what? It's uh, intrinsic existence, inherent existence. So, in other words, when we say empty, empty of inherent existence, right? Anything that en exists doesn't have any intrinsic value. So, therefore, understanding one aspects of understanding of the mind, one aspect of your mind, which realizes, which understands the emptiness, and out of sphere of that emptiness, that mind generates into the deity. So this, uh, this should be the way how we develop that uh, practice. Mm -hmm. Only so, so yes, even though we are at this point, uh, just like we do not have the actual realization. Uh, mind which realized the emptiness. However, that like a, uh, uh, that that our direction should be the 
the one aspects of the mind uh, which understands the uh, the, uh, the nature of emptiness. Uh, and then when we say, even though I do not exist in an intrinsic manner, however, that I generates into the deity, okay? Mm -hmm. Chogajitan, 저거질을 然而,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你懂得,你
to have a very a genuine renunciation is really builds on the uh, the sufferings of this life. Right. So therefore, sufferings of this life, the impermanent, impermanent stage of this life, is a crucial understanding to all the uh, above practice because it was laid out in that constructions. So everything is in that uh, uh, format. It's built on that. This whole is structured on those uh, systems. Mm -hmm. So everyone, whatever I said, you 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 should keep in mind whatever I said today about the, this basic uh, tantra preliminary or pre-requested. <laughs> keep in mind, and then you should, whenever you do tantra practice or do the shadana, you should think about it. And whenever you receive some donations or teachings or uh, from some any other lamas, you can just think about is compare it's uh, the color that is Tagda Redor and the Jerusalem Tana Digris in a seminal as to join the seminal dish arochis. My name Lindy Chela did Tantang issue tending ever to go in some near some zeta, tending ever to them who she wrote the digit men and I am the Pedro Maris. So, so based on like Chia uh, Rumbuchi says, it's a it's 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 very important to have a right set of a mind to engage in the under practice. So, what I've said here in this teaching, when you when you in the future when you go to the other teaching, you can also double check double check with the <laughs> double check uh, during those teaching in the future. But I'm quite uh, sure that. What I've said here, adjusting a uh, mindset, uh, right? It's 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 critical. It's important mm -hmm. as a thunder practitioners. That then, bang out, now we are learning. 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 We are now, another very important aspect of the tantric uh, teachings is faith or confidence. So this particularly important in tantra. Yes, those two, uh, those faith and confidence are important in other teachings. But particularly in tantra, it's it's very important. Mm -hmm. Some Diva <laughs> So, like I said, this the faith, right? The independence of Teba. Sometimes it's just like in again Tibetan, it's like a people the they, they the this the, it, they might uh connect they, they they might take in a different connotation. It's very uh, like a just uh maybe very orthodox way of believing on 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 to something, but but in reality, it's not the case. The faith. It's it's in its essence. It really trusting, believing something, have a full confidence. This those are the very important element of the faith. Uh, because like a, uh, for example, when we when we when we do the practice of vajrasattva. So in the vajrasattva practice, during all those visualizations, purifications, and believing at the end, believing that one's uh, impurities are cleansed. 
So if a person doesn't have a faith, confidence, trust, have not having a trust in this teaching, it doesn't matter that person how many times that recited, there's no effect, no no benefit because the person doesn't ha doesn't trust in the first place. How would that person gain a benefit? Mm -hmm. So trusting it's or confidence it's uh, important in the particularly very important in tantra. Yeah, I I have a one uh, one pan kind of experience in Auckland. Uh, we did uh, Vajrasattva retreat one day. Uh, I have a plan to do three sections. First morning sections, my plan was give the inst inst instructions how, how we should visualize and those things. And we did. And then second sections. So in of the first section, I gave the people for the time to ask questions, right? And they asked a lot of questions. I tried to give the answer as much as possible. And then second section, we started. Then again, people uh, asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> and saying like, you know, the end of the Vajrasadva, the fact that they said, OK, purify all the your negative or something. So, and they say, oh, reality is not true. <laughs> something like that, you know, they, the, the people still uh, how to say have a doubt so it's saying asking like that then then I thought um uh, so it's a little bit uh, how to say complicated so in general we say uh the, the Buddhism followers should study more right you should study you should ask question much as you can or something like that and then I think people follow that. <laughs> And then the reality, when you need to do the, some practice, if you have a doubt or if you were still, in, in general, same, same uh, us too, right? If we study whole uh, our lives in the monastery, but we still, we do have a lot of questions, but we, we kind of like put separate, okay? Whatever question you have, you put when you do the actual practice, then if you have a doubt, that particular practice, if you don't trust or if you don't believe, if you have not confident, then when we when we do that, that practice maybe not that effective. Then it's when, when the that the Vajrasattva pra practice the the retreat, we able to do only one section, not uh, <laughs> not the two sections. So first one the instruction, instruction, and then second one the question answers to take whole time. <laughs> and then third one, we just did, and in the beginning of the the the, the third section, I told the people the same I I told here. So you should uh, how does we we need to uh, I, 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 the that that doesn't means I I don't have a confidence for the, those people, but I. I think they, they need to learn, right? So even we learn sutras, tantras, we have a lot of questions, those things. And example, like when we go to the, receive the initiation, still we have a lot of questions. Whenever Lama recite something, emptiness, something, 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 we we uh, we do have uh, many questions. Otherwise we already overcome those, <laughs> those how to say difficulties, right? So we have a lot of questions, but we have to pay attention during the death the innations or ritual or something that we have to have a certain motivation, certain visualization of those things. So the house of trust or faith or confidence uh, toward the, whatever you do, the practice is very, very important. In, in general, if you don't have a confidence or if you don't trust, usually people don't do it, right? Why you should, why you should spend time why you should uh, uh, use your energy toward the things that you don't believe or you don't trust in general like that and so similar like uh, ten, the the in general Buddhist practice and particular in tender practice that uh, faith is very 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 important so even the in Tibetan they have some example saying like you know the the you know the 
the it is not how blessed that object or not. It totally depends on your faith. If you have a total how the the us toward something that is not a real Buddha, Buddha relics. Things is how to say that that is not the true relics, but you have a hundred percent trust or faith that that is the relics or something, and then you do the the how to say the ritual or prayer or something that you will get the bliss from that object or something like that. in Tibetan. They have some examples. So, so anyway, the faith is very important in general Buddhist practice and particular in uh, tantra practice. Uh, is uh, very very related related to the shadana or those things, right? We visualize, you know, the we have to example like this. This gomba is not is a regular gomba or something, right? When we do the shadana, example like our lokadeshwara shadana, we should think about our lokadeshwara mandala, not like just this ordinary the B Street or something that in Sacramento we should visualize as the our Lukadishwara Mandala. And then yourself as the our Lukadishwara or something that so we have to have a kind of like a how to say yeah, believing or faith or something like that. Yes. Now another important thing for the uh, uh in tantra the tantra practice is cultivating divine pride and uh, uh and visualizing the clarity of the appearance of the deities. Mm. So here, for example, so uh, 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 when someone does the practice of Aulogateshwara, so when doing the Aulogateshwara practice, uh, for the practitioner uh, must cultivate the divine pride by thinking that I am the Aulogateshwara. It's not like a just reg regular ego or something mundane pride. Rather feeling that I am the Aulogateshwara because the person is doing the Aulogateshwara uh, practices. And while doing the practices, the practitioner also being able to visualize the clarity of the physical appearance, how it looks, how hand gestures and the implements and all those as much as detail as what's possible. So that's what we call like a visualizing the clarity of the appearance and adopting the divine pride. Mm -hmm. So by adopting those two techniques in uh in one's practice, it helps to eliminate the uh mundane perception. And uh, uh, mundane, uh, it eliminates the pre mundane perception, and also it uh, it builds the uh, how to say the uh, uh, the meditate like uh, the dullness in the meditations. Mm -hmm. So since we spent a lot of time on the adjusting and motivation, so we took um, quite a chunk of time on, on this aspect. However, this is very important. So that's why I just re-emphasize on the adjusting and motivations. And now maybe we should stop here. Mm. Yeah. So any, any questions? I have a question. 
<laughs> um, I, I think that one of the things that sometimes I have a challenge with, with hearing the teachings on uh, bodhicitta about tantra, is that then when I try to practice bodhicitta, I start getting into the uh, those practices, the lojong practices of you know visualize someone you like, visualize someone you don't like, visualize someone you're neutral about, and then sometimes I'll get into the tantric practice and be like, I didn't like that person, mm -hmm. uh, so do I still want them? You know, I sort of struggle with that motivation, mm -hmm. um, and it'll come up at different times during different practices, uh, and I don't know if that's actually the point if that's the purpose of those sections of the practice or if maybe i need to check my motivation better mm -hmm. and do sort of the that bracketing that you had said about doubt right do I, do I treat that as a doubt and set it aside and have confidence in the practice or is the practice actually doing what it should be doing mm -hmm. I <laughs> Oh, <laughs> So, like, uh, 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 it is very uh, difficult from the very beginning to have all the perfect conditions, then, then you can start the practice. I have all the understanding and perfectly, and now I can start the practice. So, so, so that's not also a feasible. So our motivation has to be at well, the beginning has to be a pure, and then in actual training, it's training in progress, right? The gradually it just is is in progress. So, so one should feel in that. Uh, so in the uh, in the lojong or the mind training practice to in order to have, uh, in order to achieve a bodhicitta, the first step is to cultivating the economity of all sentient beings. And that's the way one trains. Everyone is a, uh, like a like a state of economity, right? So all those practices that aim to achieve the bodhicitta and we might be like this, like a trial and error, but nevertheless not giving up on the practice because I'm having difficulty in this practice. Therefore, maybe I should look for other practice. One should not give up on this practice because it's your practice is in pro is training in in progress. So you need to put effort. So like yes, like just uh, you, you if one might since we are training in training, so one might feel that oh I just I cannot tolerate that person or I just don't want to just spoke with that person. But, I mean like but but then again down the road, like just at the end of the day, you are in training, just then pull your bugger up and just do whatever you can in that direction. So in Tibetan, Jema means uh, modify. It means it, it's not a genuine yet. So even it's not a genuine yet, you are, I feel not genuine, but even in the model, you are just adjusting, modifying your mindset. Yes, I don't like that, but just modify it. Okay, just, okay, just, you just take it on to that person, right? Yeah. Just, so it's actually literally, it says like a German name, but it literally, literally it says they just at least adjust, just so 
how to say, uh, compromise. <laughs> and just work on because the because it starts with a good motivation and you are training. It's just always try and error, just but not give up. Yeah. If we if we wait until the perfect conditions, we may not <laughs> able to do do the practice whole life. So <laughs> There are other questions or questions online. Hi. Um, you were talking about cultivating uh, divine pride. You mm -hmm. said that it helps uh, in your meditation. Uh, is that particular meditations or is that like across the board? Yeah, when we talking about uh, the shadana, right? Avalokiteshvara shadana or the medicine Buddha or something sadhana. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so here um, in Tantra, right? So in Tantra, like uh, the presentation of Shamatha and Vipassana, they don't like uh, just uh, in a separate presentation, but rather in a, in a more condensed. Uh, so, so your question based on the, by uh, the uh, adopting the divine pride and clarity, clarity of visualization of the deity, does it helps across the board of any meditations? Right? Is that the questions? So here Rumbache says like uh, law. So Rumbache here particularly uh, in tantra aspects of the meditation on shamatha. Hey, and, uh, uh, yes, it maybe it's the answer is yes across the board, particularly this is Jordan's dad. Daily yoga meditations, daily yoga meditation, either you are meditating or the medicine Buddha or Avalokiteshvara and so forth. Okay, but yes, it helps across the uh, broad Cla clarity yeah. is re more related to the how do you single point meditation? Yeah, shamatha, come abiding. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Any further questions? This is more of a comment. I just wanted to thank you for especially what you said about suffering and renunciation and how that can be a foundation for all of your practice, mm -hmm. because that gives me a great hope for myself and other people as they're suffering, that that can be used then to, uh, be of service and grow our practice. So mm -hmm. thank you for putting it that way. That was very helpful. They, uh, in, in Buddhist, they, when they talk a lot about the suffering or that, or those, it's, it's not kind of like, uh, how to say, like, you know, that's how to call color. And the house and the children suffer, the children suffer, the children suffer, the children suffer. Chidangi Chidangi Nanzu Nang Degi and the Tidina Nanzu Nang Degi Deva Jura. Deva Degi Kangai attend the Deva de Maris, Karis and Uncle Ju Leda Nimu, whichever day, Ju Leda Nimu, Judy, any Mizama Chitang, Judy Dungawa Chitang, Judy, any call the dating age, not a call the tend to Deva Maris and Sungirta. No. Chidangi Chum Missy Chokangata, Dugari, Color Daddy. ま、ずなんじちから精神不細で作業まれて動画で出てすんぶよまれ。ですね。こう、サムロタイでこう点と電話インセンスサムタイにまれ。こう、普段で点と電話、普段でよまれ。順前からそのこう10で例題に見る
Yes. So now, in general speaking, just like a, just uh, just a general comment. Now, in in Buddhist uh, uh, in Buddhist teachings, uh, suffering topic of suffering is a quite a uh, uh, prevalent right. It's, it's quite a common uh, themes in Buddhist uh, teaching and. And therefore, many people, uh, there many people becomes a vulnerable to think, vulnerable for having a misconception on the uh, very aspects of the teaching, and to some extent, they might think it's very and uh, with this outlook on life is very negative and very pessimistic and just very, uh, for like a just and so on and so forth. But however, so here when we we are not saying we are not saying that. Life is in a, just uh, like it's just uh, it's just like it's if it's like it's just it, it, like if it, if the food is very delicious, we are not saying this is a suffering. It is yes, of course, we should enjoy the delicious food and so forth. Just enjoy the life, right? But we are simply reminding that that happiness that we think happiness in life, it's very short lived. Because the causes and condition of that happiness, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's not stable. It's it, it's because of delusion and the karma, right? So therefore, we are we are presenting the different perspective of our whole life. But this is a general comment, okay. Mm-hmm. No, nothing to the uh, yeah. yeah in general it's saying like you know that if you do good things then you may create karma to rebirth as a god right god ram that's it so you you yeah so like a, just like a yeah just like, uh, like in the buddha says you have a celestial beings or the god or whatever we could say it yeah that's uh that's ram's Everybody's enjoying everything. Looks like how to say, don't mention merit. They were changing to sugar yogurt and lucky. Listen, so according to the Buddhist cosmology, it's like a celestial beings as a very state of happiness, everything's pure, everything's magical and the divine. Mm. But they're saying that that is not the how to say, then the devil marries. So, however, in the, even in celestial uh, realm, celestial world, that's it's not a state of uh, of a permanent, um, permanent happiness or something like that, because the, the the cause of those happiness is by the delusions and karma. So even 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 we're not talking about our human life, set, talking about the, those realms. So. So in general, general, I try to how to say try to try to color that in motor We're just introducing. We're just like it's just we yeah. just like yeah, yeah yeah yeah. If we able to think think how to say think think how to say rigorously or things accordingly, then it makes sense. You know <laughs> everything. Everything is dependent, and most of our lives, uh, you know, the effectives are something dependent on something, and then where most of those things uh, we own uh, created from previous lives or the beginning of our lives or something that we cause it, and then causes are good, then maybe good, then causes. Are the bound by the, the karma and delusions and bad karma or something, then that effective is similar. So so the how to call the the legend is or legend legend law of causality. Law of causality. Law of causality. They have no way if you uh how to say you you so if like so so based on the law of causalities whatever so everything has an equal and opposite reaction if you plant the 
wheat seed, you will produce a wheat, not a rice. Oh, right. If you plant the rice seed, you will have a rice, not a wheat, so forth. So that's the law of causality. So so if we plant the seed of happiness, you will have a happiness. If we plant the seed of suffering, we will have a suffering. That's a simple law of causality. It's kind of, kind of become like a too much talk. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I I I I have many times thinking that you know our lives compared to the previous lives and the future lives, our lives pretty much very very short, right? But but uh, we totally kind of looks like we totally focus on the, this life, not the, <laughs> not the previous and not the future. We didn't think that much about the previous lives or what we did or something like that. We didn't think that much, and then future lives we didn't put that much effort we just you know within 100 years or something that's even uh, even the last moments still you know you know it's not 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 a bad thing but you know i have experienced with the one uh my mom neighbors the lady she uh, respect me uh, respect uh, very much toward me and we know each other for a long time so when she was dying. See, that's two months I was there, and we are neighbor. And suddenly, sometimes she uh, she's she's uh, she was on the bed, and sometimes suddenly, like in the middle of the night, like one o'clock, two o'clock, she asked uh, the her family to invite me to her room. And sometimes I go over there and say prayers and sometimes i have no idea what should i do <laughs> she have some kind of like a scary color no, so, no so that time she have like a she's in a state of panic state right and that caused so yeah. like a uh um the visual hallucinations yeah it's amazing something something reality is nothing but she feel she saw something like that you know and then whenever i go she asked me to come over there. When I go there, she said, "Oh, when when you come, so that those goals so gone or something like that." Even the, my main point is not like not about those things. So, so two months I spent with them and their whole family is there. And then, just before she passed away, two or three days, and she, how to say, she's uh, vocals very low cannot uh, speak that much uh, loud and even then last day she three days before she can speak but she didn't say that much she didn't talk that much and then last day she tried to say something and everybody didn't hear even his husband, her husband and she has uh, three kids you know, all of them tried to uh, understand but nobody understands then then i i listen i don't hear clearly then i put the, my ear to the his mouth her mouth and then i hear whatever she's saying it's a dying moment but she have a very very concern about uh, her family uh, she, i i believe she she knows she's going to die Tibetan have a very unusual the, uh, the custom to the Western, right? When Tibetan people, when they die moments, nobody say you are dying. Even doctor already told them something's untreatable, going to die or something. The family knows, but they not, they don't want to tell that the person who's dying. We believe if tell the person, person may just it disturbs the mind state of mind get or, fear or just panic or whatever yeah, something like that and then uh, the uh, people believe that when dying moments stable mind is very important or something like that so that's why in general they didn't tell usually we don't tell that the uh, person who dying you are dying or something like that anyway seems like she knows she's going to die and then so that moment still she's thinking about uh, her family, about some business or something, something like that. Then, 
then I hear those her own family didn't hear. I was there with her. Then I have no choice. I lie. <laughs> I lie to her. Okay, your business something. She has a two or three shop somewhere in the head up head about area like a southern India, some city. And I told her, oh, don't worry, those all registers the transport to the, your kids. You don't need to worry at all. And that, that year, she cannot go to the, that business, right? And she she too much worry about the, those, uh, how to say? Tongze. That's the best, the, like a business product. Yeah, she, she worry or she cannot go that year and she thinks all those, how to say, uh, put us uh, unsold over there or something like that. And I told them, um, you don't need to worry. Their family already transferred to the other family. Those, everything they, how to say, so everything is transfer and you're going to lose anything on your business. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> and she clearly heard whatever I said. And she cannot move that much, but she, how to say, had like that. She's very happy. And then I went to the their, uh, kitchen to drink some tea or something, maybe five minutes or something. Then one of her uh, child calling me, would you come, come now? Now she might be dying. When I went back there, she passed away. So, so I'm saying like, you know, the main point is our human nature, kind of like human nature or something that, you know, the, just thinking about it within this life, not not thinking about future lives or previous lives or something like that. So everything we put the effort toward the policy, very very kind of like a short period. Period compared to the previous lives, future lives, our lives are very short. Short, how to say, duration, right? Duration is very short, but. It's kind of wrong. I don't understand. <laughs> where, where, yeah, wherever we, you look at something like that, something like this, something like even like uh, some famous people, so rich people, poor people, uh, monks or lamas or nuns or general public. So in general, when you, when you look at it, it seems like a, like that. So. So we, if I, I mean individual, I'm not talking about the general individual. If you want to, when we look at the, all the, those tests and the, the, uh, received those teachings, there were no other ways we were able to overcome for the suffering or achieve the enlightenment if, if we didn't put the effort toward future lives or liberations or enlightenment or something. There were no way we can go out. <laughs> That's the reality, right? So in, I cannot say everybody's like that, but in general concepts, seems like, you know, and if we don't believe in the future lives, that makes sense, right? You should enjoy or something. Even, even sometimes a friend of mine, you know, some Western friends, they work very hard. They, you know, them. everybody work very hard, right? Then I try to say something, you know, that you should enjoy it too. You should enjoy it too. Lives we don't know, right? Suddenly something happened. Then you, you, you did whole lives. Try the, how to say, effort to put something that you want to be happier, happier or something, then may, you may not able to get that happy at time. So you should enjoy when you do, every, every, every moment you should enjoy your life or something like that. I cannot say some my friends think about future life, but I, I try to say enjoy every moment, every day, and try to, try to balance, uh, you know, the hard work and <laughs> enjoyment. Too much talk. Okay, thank you. So we'll close with that dedication tomorrow. Um, Arya Deva. Mm -hmm. So 
I'd just like to say when we combine the divine pride of Tantra with the certainty that comes with study, it, it, it's a really uh, joyful experience, right? Then, um, then there's really no doubt the certainty of study, particularly Aryadeva, Nagarjuna, Chandra Kirti, and and doing the Tantra, wonderful combination. So I uh, hope I can see you all tomorrow. So we end with dedication. All right, dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain a state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chenrezi Tenzin Jatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display, the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver, a stream of vast and profound instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Songkapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losantapa, I make request at your holy feet. Appreciate just for the people online, I'll, I'll use the microphone. Um, Rishi is asking that we cancel uh, the 28th teachings so that we are not in the middle of a chapter when we finish. So finish chapter one tomorrow and then uh, not meet with Rinpoche on the 28th, which is very sad, but thank you so much. <laughs> So thank you for being here today and tomorrow. Um, and of course, uh, uh, my aspiration is um, uh, it's actually to, to take a, a nice long journey through Aryadeva so that it really soaks in. And uh, so um, I'm happy to have made a really good start. And then uh, when you come back from India, then we can start up again. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay, music. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>